Welcome to the Jay Geiger Studios podcast, where we help you achieve your ideal outcome. We're here to provide value to you and your organization every step of the way. I'm your host and guide on this journey, Jeff Geiger, and I am happy you are here with us today. Today in the studio, we have Cray Wilkie. He is the project management practice team lead here at Jay Geiger Consulting. Welcome, Cray. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, that's a very unique name. You don't hear Cray a lot. Yeah, not many people do. There's the Cray supercomputer. Oh, yes. Yeah. Although I, I think that's spelled C R A Y and you're C R A E. I think you're actually the one who told me about the Cray yes. supercomputer yeah. for the first time. I think it was in Wisconsin that that was invented, if I am right. Jordan can maybe look that up. Yeah. So we've known each other for a fair bit of time here. I knew you since you were a wee young lad right out of college. In fact, I think you were still in college when I met you. Yeah, we met, gosh, almost 10 years ago now when I was an intern at school specialty. So, yeah, I was yeah. a sophomore, junior. I can't believe junior. it's been that long. It's gone by so fast. Yeah. I, I noticed uh, there's something unique about you since the beginning. Hey, yeah, so Jordan's got this pulled up here from Cray. Yeah, Seymour Cray is the founder. Chippewa County. Yep. Yeah, they it was in Chippewa Falls. Yep, interesting. Look at that. Yeah, supercomputer. Yeah. So is that where your parents got the name? No, my parents actually, from the little bit I've heard, and I probably should know more, that it was some actor or something, right? They heard the name, and I guess you could say the the rest is history, though. But I come from a family of pretty unique names. Yep. So I met your sister, too. Afton. Afton, yeah. Yeah, she was uh, working at the same client. Like I think she was actually an employee there. Yep. Ran into her. I, I made sure to go say hi. Yep. Afton, yeah. Torin, and then okay, Justin. Yep, you have Justin too, <laughs> yep, the oldest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he have an earring in one ear and spiky hair? Like on was that uh, Family Guy that episode where Peter got to be Justin? Found out his name was Justin Peter. You know, do you know that one? No, <laughs> no, Jordan does though. So you don't watch uh, dumb TV? No, I do. Okay, but just not that one. Not that one. No. Okay. Um. So I, I know. Um. You were you kind of got your start um, right out of college. You're an intern, and you ended up working for that client for a while. What did you get out of that experience? Yeah, so I started as an intern, spent a lot of would have been a year or two as an intern at school specialty, kind of all around the project management area and just learning from other people there, whether it was a PM or a BA, and then eventually moved on to an analyst after college and then scrum master. And after you actually rolled off of uh, school, especially, I took your project over. Okay. To you do... probably did it way better than I did. <laughs> no, no, I actually, I, I remember at the time when, you know, you rolled off cause you completed the project. Right. And then shortly thereafter, they went into an upgrade. I was actually looking through your documentation that was out there and the way you know that you did things because at the time i didn't have many big projects under my belt so i was like well i might as well learn some from someone who had you know many years experience so looking at how you did things and seeing the documents and so that actually was kind of a a big guide and kind of shaping how I went about project well, that's management. Good. I'm, I'm glad it turned out to be positive because I don't remember what I did back then. But I do I do remember that um, it was um, under the guidance of Doug. You know, Doug yep. uh, kind of set the tone for it. One, one thing I got from him was he, you know, if he starts in on a project, he wants to get to the, like, CRP or conference room pilot or whatever you want to call it, like that where you're actually hands on keyboard as soon as possible and then kind of iterate over it, which fits in with the, the whole um, agile approach that we put in place back then. Did you end up using some of those in the upgrade? Like that whole, like get to testing as soon as possible. Yeah. approach. Yeah, for sure. So for that, for that, the PIM project um, during the upgrade, we wanted to get in hand sooner than later. And I think kind of that approach, right. Getting it in people's hands as soon as possible you know, because if you wait too long, you could be delivering a product, uh, a product that's, you know, way out in left field. Right. Everybody's seen that picture yeah. of the swing, right? Yeah. You don't want to deliver the wrong swing. Right. Right. So I think the sooner you get stuff in people's hand, which obviously aligns with like an agile delivery or a hybrid delivery, um, it 
will get you ahead of issues potentially quicker. And, you know, it has a bunch of other benefits, you know, getting users up to speed with the product and all that. So, yep. you know, ownership, ownership. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of benefits to that. Yeah. So did you think you were going to go into project management while you were still in college? Yeah. So it's actually kind of funny. I, uh, I freshman year of college or whatever, maybe a sophomore, I was sitting there kind of, what do I want to do? Right. I was thinking marketing and then I, there's kind of a newer degree down at UW Oshkosh, which was management. Um, and they had a bunch of, uh, subclasses, if you will. And one of them was project management. And I always kind of liked the projects because throughout my kind of, uh, high school working and stuff. I always enjoyed doing more projects at wherever I was at, right? Other than just like the the day-to-day tasks. So when I saw the project management, I talked with someone else who was kind of like, hey, that's a really cool degree. I went into that. I didn't know which kind of area that I wanted to like construction project management, IT project management. I just kind of stumbled into IT project management, always loving technology and, um, you know, getting that internship kind of shifted me to focus on that. And, and ultimately sitting here now, I'm really happy I did. So what was it, what were like the key things that drew you to project management in it in particular? Well, I think first and foremost, I've always liked technology. Okay. I always just found it interesting. Right. And then I think the aspect of project management is, I love, you know, the the idea at the beginning, right, of, hey, we need to do so a vision for a big thing, vision yeah. for a big thing or even a small thing in yeah. some cases, as we know. But there's still that that vision, that business requirement or goal or whatever you want to call it. And we need to get to X by X date. Right. And then there's some of the the projects that we've all done where, you know, it might be just delivering this enhancement for this group or, you know, I've done some where at the end of the day, you're saving a company a million dollars per month by implementing X technology. So I think it's just exciting to see a project beginning to end. You know, it's not always a straight path either. There's a lot of strategy behind it. There's a lot of, you know, communication, stakeholder management, all that fun stuff. So it's, you know, when people think of project management, they think, oh, you just deliver projects. And it's like, right. They think of Gantt charts and uh, task lists. Right. Right. And I think a good project manager, obviously, is good at those skills, right? You still have to, you still have to come up with the project plans and all those kind of administrative stuff, but a good project management is, you know, working with the teams, leading them, um, getting people excited about things and, you know, willing to go that extra yard to drive something forward right. if, if need be. Right. Yeah, that's great. That's great to hear. I think that fits really well with uh, where we want to take it and how, you know, with the philosophy that we have right here at Jay Geiger. Um, do you, so you said you like technology. Um, how do you use, and this is a question we ask when we're doing our recruiting and we're through the interview process, how do you use technology in your personal life? Wow. And have like, and particularly if, if you have programmers and stuff and they don't use their programming skills in their personal life somehow, that's kind of like, Hmm, do you really like what you do? So how do you, how, how do you use technology in your real life? Yeah, to put you on the spot, but no, I I think it's an interesting question though, right? Because I think for me, I kind of maybe have a bit different uh, house situation, right? Like we've talked about before, I live out kind of in the middle Are you of nowhere. In the boonies, yeah, in in the boonies, right? Yeah. Um, you have high speed internet at your house, yeah. okay? Yeah, so it's kind of cool. I live, so I used to live in town, and I barely had any internet. Now I live in the middle of nowhere. It literally in the middle of nowhere and I have fiber. Wow. So I think kind of, I know a little something about that, but yeah, go on. Yeah. Kinda, That's pretty awesome. Kind of going back to your question though, like what do, how do I leverage technology at home? Right. You know, I kind of am a bit of a nerd. So like I have a full security system set up around my house. I'm working on a networking project. To, so I'm not going to be able to sneak around. Do nope, you know? Don't. Okay. No, nope, no. Nope. And again, with being in the woods, people might go, are you kind of paranoid? And I'm like, no, I just like to, you know, know what's going on around the house and having young kids. Sometimes you, you know, you get a notification. Oh, where's my son going? Right. Or mm-hmm. doing so it's a sense of mind from that. But, um, you know, there's other projects, too. Like I use 
AI, chat GPT, ask questions. I've actually been doing that a lot, you know, as I've been doing research about a project or something I want to do at my house, instead of sifting through a manual, I'll type in, you know, show me, I was looking at something on my heat pump the other day, because I was just curious on how it worked. And I typed in the question of how does XYZ heat pump work? It's a multi-stage unit. And chat GPT was just spitting it out to me. And then I would ask another question about it and it would tell me more. And so, I mean, yes, those are kind of maybe a bit more of the obvious answers, but it's, you know, even for Joel Schmo, who's not in it, they can be leveraging some of these tools that we right. use. Right. So I have used uh, some of my project management skills on projects. In fact, I had one where in a nine day period of time, we took a horseshoe shaped driveway and a backyard that wasn't fenced in and comp- and it was blacktop driveway and all the landscaping and transformed it into a T shaped driveway with a, six foot tall fence with cement pillars around it with an automated gate opener and all redone landscaping. We did it in nine days. And the guy who um, did the concrete, which included pouring the pillar bases and the concrete, which was 90% of the hard work. He, when when I showed that, I showed him the plan and everything to him. He's like, I've never seen anything like that before. I've never seen a homeowner this prepared. Yeah. We could totally do that. Yeah. And so it actually took a, a really long potential, you know, month long project and condensed it down to nine days because of the visual communication I was able to do and making sure to compress everything as much as it can. Yeah. And luck you know, we had some luck with the weather too. You know, yeah. we didn't it didn't rain and stuff, but have you used uh, your project management skills like that? Yeah, for sure. So actually the house before us we was a foreclosure. So we got the one you bought just now. No, no, our previous home. Oh, okay. Um, so going into that, it was kind of like, hey, you had a lot of catch up to do on it. I bet catch up, and if we're really going to see the ROI of doing this, I, we're gonna have to take on some bigger projects. So, um, a good example of that is we bought the house, and gosh, it was March or whatever. We were getting married in May, and I said we have two months to gut a floor. And get it ready for us. We're moving in. We're moving in on <laughs> day after our wedding. Yep. And when we got the house, it wasn't livable. So it was kind of like, you know, every weekend or throughout the week with working full time. And a wedding. And a wedding. Um, we need to get this house ready. You know, stone, tile, paint, refreshing, you know, baseboards, some in the list went on. But to that point, right, if if we didn't lay out the project right and kind of did requirements, if you will, in the wrong direction, well, you know, you would have gaps all over the place. Would have taken you longer. You wasted a lot of time and money. Yep. Yeah. And because I did most of the work myself, but there's things like carpet. I subbed that out to someone. Right. And had I not had baseboards on by the time they came in to do it, well, then it would have delayed it. So yeah, I mean, that's an exact example, but I think even that's probably a bigger example, but there's project management skills throughout everyone's right. day-to-day life that they're using. So could, could you have done that as well without running projects uh, for your job? I mean, sure, okay. but it would have been more difficult, right? Because yeah. you're you you don't understand the dependencies and timing and communication even skills, communication mm-hmm. skills and procuring some of the jobs that, uh, you know, I don't have the skills or even tools to do. Right. Yeah. And how can you crash a schedule? Yeah, <laughs> If needed. Right. <laughs> That's right. You got to <laughs> have that in your back crash pocket. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, you mentioned you live out in the country. I know that you like the outdoors and all that kind of stuff Um, and are a an outdoorsman what are your favorite outdoorsy things to do yeah so some of my favorite outdoors is uh hunting and fishing trout fishing fly fishing is a big one in the spring and and into the fall as well um and then fall i pick up duck and deer hunting and then another big one which i think most everybody knows in the office is is barbecue and traveling around the country cooking steak and steak competitions so that State come so I know you do the barbecue because you kick everybody's butt whenever we have a competition here with cooking around. Like, I, what is he the three year three years in a, a row on the chili competition? Yep, three four three or four. four. 
you know, you get lost when you yeah. win so many, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what what are those state competitions like? I, 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 I've heard of them before, but I don't understand, like, how they are. like, And what's the experience like? So I got into state competitions because I have a competitive background and I was love cooking and got into barbecue really big. And I was like, well, do so aren't I- there barbecue competitions? There are. Yeah. But at the time, you know, having young kids um, and still having young kids, a barbecue or like a traditional Kansas City Barbecue Society competition, your four meat, those are all weekend ordeals and you're I cooking see. overnight. Okay. And I really did not want to get into something. But you still wanted to compete. Still wanted to compete. Yeah. And I didn't want to get into something where it's like, hey, See your family. I'm going sure. away for the weekend um, to go cook. So I wanted to do something that we could do as a family. I stumbled upon uh, State Cook Off Association and really got into it because they're day events. You know, you get there early in the morning and you're wrapped up by in the evening, if not earlier. And it kind of fed that competitive side of me and now last year my wife got into the ancillary side of things and which is which it it's basically uh side dishes if you will but they're it they're really competitive as well and i didn't know that there was such a thing yeah so her categories changed every time and it could be one week it could be desserts another week it could be anything spam so she got into that and we bring our you know our two kids along and they have fun and it's something fun we can do as a family and you know we'll go out of state for it and make a long weekend of it or you know this year i think we have eight or ten in wisconsin and then we'll probably go down to iowa and illinois and so does it end up becoming kind of a camaraderie kind of thing because people go to the same ones and you see them at time after again yep yeah so we have our group that we cook with um when we're on site and we've gotten to know a lot of people as well so it's it's fun because you go to these competitions and we have good friends that are states away and uh you show up and you yeah. see them and yeah, it's like a big, for a while and it's a big family thing yeah. and and it's really turned into something awesome that we can do as a family and and my kids love it my son who's going to be four this year can start doing the what they call kids cue really so he's going to start competing here in a little bit he's already <laughs> grilling with me and wow. fair and thing. Yeah. how about that yeah so it, he's only four and you're already doing that yep he can start doing it at four at so four. okay at four so okay. he'll that's what his birthday present will be his first huh. little grill and all that so that's really really cool yeah um it's amazing the uh interesting things that people can get into and what people make into competitions yep Yep. It's so. gone as far as I've had some of our clients here at Jay Geiger get interested in and cook some events with me as well. Really? Yep. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, at the end of the day, it, you know, we're not doing it to make money because <laughs> with, no, I'm uh, sure it's expensive. It, yeah. But I wouldn't trade it right. for anything because the memories that we make doing it and all the cool opportunities and stuff that we've gotten to do as a family with the kids, it, it, means a lot to my wife and I. So yeah, that's really cool. And it's a good family thing and sounds like a positive type of thing and yep. it helps build community. Yeah. And some great experiences. For sure. Cause some of these competitions huh. we are going to the now middle I'm wondering of nowhere. How you find time to do all this stuff. That's a lot. I mean you're talking about hunting, fishing, you've got a house out in the boonies and I know it takes a lot of work to keep a place that's out in the wilderness up, you know, because you're constantly fighting against elements. And then chasing two small kids around and then the barbecue or the state competitions. Where do you find time for all this? Um, I don't know if I do. You're always on the go. <laughs> always on the go. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing with the, I get ideas for different uh, hobbies and all that. And at this point in my life, I go, nope, I got to stick with what I know. So it's just kind of a. How long ex- do you think you're going to keep doing this? Steak? Yeah. Oh, long time. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. We, we had a slight lull. Uh, in the sea, we haven't done one for probably a month and a half, but starting in July, really through October, we have one or two a month till the end of the year. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Do you do, do it in the winter time too? Yeah. One or two usually. But the um, more, they can't be indoor if you're grilling. So they have a couple indoor ones. How do you do that? They do them at like a football stadium oh, or something where it's big kind ventilation. of indoor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. I, what are my, I'm 
trying to think of what my hobbies are. I like fishing and stuff mm-hmm. like that, but I just don't make enough time for for that stuff. Um, I think family adventures and things like that is probably my biggest hobby. It's hard though. I mean, to your point, where do you find time for all yeah. that? Because you're, you know, obviously, you know, working yeah. and keeping a business alive and all that. And yep. it's, you know, I couldn't imagine from that front, but it's kind of just balancing all what you can do. And there's some times where it's like, well, I'm too busy. I'm not going to right. fish. Well, I think um, if I was to say it's a hobby, cottaging is probably one. Oh. We have a place up north and there's things that come with it that are um, added work because you're basically having another house that you have to take care of. And But I find it to do physical labor because our jobs are not physical. You know, we're, mm-hmm. it's a thought job and a communication job. And so sometimes to do something physical is actually relaxing and whatnot so you can shut off yeah you know shut off your your mind for a bit and just put yourself into your work and just think about task at hand rather than all the various things so I, I think that's probably it which i'm assuming with the cooking and stuff is kind of the similar kind of thing like you get in the zone and yeah you just kind of shut your you shut your worry about all these things out there problems and and you can focus on task at hand and like crushing it with the steak yeah yeah, and with the steak side of things, it's it's so particular, especially when we do like the prep on it, it's a little bit more slow. But when it comes down to like, hey, turn ins coming up, yep. like the entire cook takes let's just say less than ten minutes. But we, you know, stopwatches hitting intervals of your turns and all that, it's very precise. And even if you, you know, lay it down on the grill the wrong way, you're gonna get you your the, wrong marks. Yes. And, and so it's like super precise and like intense at that moment. Um, but do it's a measure, rush. Do they measure the marks? They don't measure the marks, but you are scored the on all the aesthetics. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it different kinds of steaks? No. So they provide all the meat. Okay. So you come. Everybody and, uses does the same kind of meat then. So yep. they provide it. You pay ahead for it, and then they yep. say, "Here, you're going to cook this meat." Yeah, they lay it out on a table. Is it always the same kind of meat? Yep, always ribeyes. Okay, ribeyes. Okay. So. How thick are they generally? Uh, I think they have to be a minimum of an inch thick. Okay. There's a minimum. That's yeah. good. And sometimes they actually have super thick ones where we'll that's harder, isn't it? Harder because it throws off all your time. So we'll trim yep. them down. Okay. Um, but yeah, so they'll put them out on a table and you get you, to go pick them. Yep. But, but you pick a chip. Okay. And you got to go in that order. Go in that order, and then they reverse it, so you get two stakes per turn in. Okay. So it kind of evens the playing field because we gotcha. all have a a style of ribeye, if you will. Right. Of what so we you're like looking for a particular thing on a piece of steak. Yep. Yeah. Wow. All these complications. Interesting. Very interesting. With having that competitive background and. So you said that twice now. What's your competitive background? Well, I used to do sports and okay. then, you know, competed in bow fishing, competed in snowboarding. And I didn't and, know you competed in snowboarding. Yeah. A little bit back in the day. Huh? Yeah. Did a lot of stuff. You did. So um, sports, uh, what sports did you do when you were in uh, high school and whatnot? In high school, I did a lot of baseball okay. up until, yeah, I, at JV, I stopped playing. So not a full lot, uh, sure. but, you know, kind of actually at that time realized I like spring bull fishing and fishing a lot more than playing baseball. That, so that's what was the deciding factor. Was, yeah, I was kind of just losing interest in it yeah. anyways. And I was starting to work a lot at that time too. In too. your middle late teens? Uh, yeah, I started working when I was 14, okay. I think. Yeah. Pizzas. <laughs> yep. Maker or deliverer? Couldn't uh, have been a deliverer unless you did it on your bike. Dishes. Dishes. Oh, then, you were the dishwasher? Yeah. Then maker. Okay. Yeah. You got to pay your dues. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't think I could work the oven till I was 16. I think there's oh, a rule behind that could or be. something. Or maybe they just told me cause they didn't want me making yeah, maybe pizza. <laughs> not. Maybe that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's the, um, now uh, you weren't in consulting before you came on board with us. Um, what's the most surprising thing about consulting that you found leaving working directly for a company versus being a consultant? So I really like the consulting side of things because from my standpoint, I like working projects that would, you know, from, my time at school specialty and VF corporation, right? I've always kind of been in the the projects world, but so many times in those more internal facing roles, you got to kind of support like the, 
running the operations. Right, for sure. So you might ramp up on a project like at uh, VF, I did an SAP implementation. But, you know, after that's over the finish line, sure, you have break, fix, right? But a lot of times then you go into more just like business as usual, whereas, you know, consulting, you know, small, large, medium projects. Project, it's project, just project, 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 project. Yeah. And that fits your personality, and especially yeah. given you're so competitive and busy. Yeah. yeah. And and sometimes it, it it's a lot all at mm-hmm. once, especially, you know, lately I've had a lot of a number of medium sized projects all at once, which, you know, all take various, you know, yeah, and touching the, over and the, the week. thing that people don't think about until they're in that situation is that it's not that you don't have enough hours in the week. It's that you've got multiple projects competing for the same hours of the day. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's definitely difficult, right? Like I would love to say, yeah, I'll take on more and just, you know, work a little you might bit. have the capacity for it, but they're all fighting for the same hour. Right. Yeah. And especially with my schedule right now, or, you know, a lot of the project manager schedule, you know, you're back to back meetings all day. And, you, and then it's not like, you know, not to draw comparisons, but you're not just a developer, not just a developer that came out wrong, but you're not a developer where it's like, oh, hey, I'll just, you know, catch up with work later in the evening right. like a lot of my work is driven off of meetings pulling people together right. and yeah there's the administrative side of things and, and like you could do like wrap-ups and communications and things like that after hours or outside hours to kind of recap what's going on and then send out meeting invites and things like that but if you're interacting with other people it's got to be during their work day yeah and a lot of times as you know you know you have vendors you're working with as well and they're not usually as willing to say, oh, yeah, I'll meet you with you later at night. Now, I have a lot of offshore teams now, so I usually start quite a bit earlier than the typical person or at the very least I'm available to them. So that's kind of where maybe I can pick up some additional hours. But, yeah, it gets interesting sometimes. So um, how have you adapted to, and this is kind of changing gears a little bit, how have you adapted to the new trend that businesses are more open to a hybrid work environment? of working on site, off site. And there's an added element here where we've got our, our office for uh, Jay Geiger, where you could be working for a customer and working from this location. So how, how have you adapted to that? And how do you think that is good or bad? Yeah. So from my standpoint, I've always kind of positioned myself of what does the client or customer need? Do they need me two days on site? Do they need me the full week on site? Or what is the project really driving, right? So that's kind of first and foremost. But at the end of the day, I my personality suits a hybrid approach really well. I like the on site. I like the conversation like we're having now or seeing people. Yep. But it's also nice to have that that at home time where I can be in my office at home, I can be working on stuff and, you know, heads down time and, and have that flexibility, right. You know, with where I live, if I need to have an appointment that day, it's great knowing I have the flexibility of, Oh, Hey, I'll just work from home this day and and go to my appointment rather than, you know, coming into the office, driving almost an hour home, doing the appointment and losing time. So I think it's great for organizations to have that flexibility because there are people and I've worked with many excellent individuals where they're like, Hey, I'm better off doing this at home. You know, I get either distracted in the office or I just don't like, it and I can get way more done at home. Do you and think that's real or do you think that that's an excuse or it depends on the person? I think it depends on the person, but I also know that their results, you know, I will, I should know as a project manager if they're not getting their work done. Right. Right. Because that's part of your role. Because it's part of my role. And, and, and if they're not getting their deliverables, then it's like, hey, what's going on? Yep. You know, because and you're there to clear hurdles for them so that they can. Right. So, right. I, I mean, my kind of thought process or philosophy has always been, hey, you know, I want my team members to have, you know, whatever tools and, work accommodations to deliver their projects, you know, and if that means, Hey, I'm going to be on site, you know, once, twice a week. Great. Cool. As long as you're getting your stuff done and you know, you're making yourself available during the times because I've also had people and it 
doesn't work very well where they're like, okay, I'm going to be on an hour for the day and they're night owls. And then they do all their work at night, which that doesn't work. Right. Well, the only thing it possibly could work for is if you're taking requirements as a developer and developing and that's it. And the, and the requirements are super well defined. Yeah. So I think, you know, because collaborative is better. Right. I think for us at Jay Geiger, you know, we're, we're all here because we're, good individuals right and and strong professionals and good talent so at the end of the day you know our clients and customers trust us and we're willing to meet whatever you know rules or whatever they have outlined but at the end of the day i think you know a hybrid work is great for many right right so if you had any advice to give so you're how how long has it been since you graduated college nine years eight years eight or nine years yeah it doesn't even seem like that. How, how can it possibly be that long? Yeah. Um, if you had any advice to give college students that are about to graduate, what what would you, especially if they're in this arena of IT and project management, business analysts, what would you tell them? Yeah. So project management, especially when I was doing like an internship, like I went through, it's hard to find those, but don't give up on it because it's a, great field it's you know so why do you think that is that there's not that many spots for it is because people are looking for they don't want an intern filling that role they want someone with experience i i think it's because an intern pm is kind of more unique right i never thought of that before like i never thought of interning as a project manager and thinking of it now i've never seen a role for that there's a few but they're it's very minimal. So you have a lot of people possibly competing for the same role. Yeah. So I, I will always say I was very lucky to stumble across that. Right. So, but yeah, but you got your foot in the door and you proved yourself. I mean, it was evident right away. Yeah. That's so, why. That's why I had my eye on you from <laughs> early on. But I, I think to that point, right? Like, get your foot in the door, and even if you're get in, so you got to get an internship. Internships are huge. I was so if you're going to be a project manager, even if you're not a project manager as an intern, maybe project assistants, business analysts, whatever. Get your foot in the door. Get your foot in the door, because as we've all seen it, you know, maybe you're you start off as a BA, right, a business analyst, and then you start, you know, dropping those hints. Hey, I'd love to do some PM right. work, and we've seen a lot of BAs and even developers turn into project managers. Strong, strong team members, strong candidates can really morph themselves into the position that they want to do. Get your foot in the door and align yourself with the, the strong people out there. Um, another thing that I've always kind of, I've had, you know, different people roll up under me at, you know, early on in their careers. And I always tell someone like, be that person who, if, you know, your manager, boss, whomever says, Hey, I need to do this, right? I need you to do this. Even if it doesn't fall in your like day to day job, be like, okay, yeah. Right. And even so if be a, be a yes person, be a yes person. And it's not always the easiest thing to right. do. And I'm not saying like bury yourself or make it unrealistic for yourself, but be that person of, Oh, Hey, I'm going to go reach out to Cray because I know they'll figure it out. And if you, even if you don't, Hey, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. I'm going to have to figure out a couple of things, but I'll get it done. Right. And I think that's something, you know, early on in my career and even now, like I may not have all the answers right now to the question you may be looking for or getting done, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to ask some people, but right. we'll get it over the finish line. So be, be that type of person who, you know, says yes and drive it forward. That's good. That's good advice. Um, wh- one, what about um, organizations and clubs and certifications and like getting involved at school with the things that you have there. And then we're starting to get involved with some uh, colleges around here. And one area that I think is a easy win for them. And I think it gets them some um, credit for school is like getting their IIBA certification. It's not easy to get it, but as a student, if you were at least going through the process of getting it, would that not give you a leg up in getting the job or a PMI certification or something like that? Yeah. So we've seen it, you know, as we've, you know, presented people to different organizations and stuff like, 
your your PMP project management professional, which I have, it carries. Now it'd be tough to get that as a student, though, because you have you to can't. prove. Right. You can't get that as a, as a student, but you can get your uh, CAPM certified associate project manager. I okay. think it's called. And you can get that with a four year degree. And when I was down at UWO, there was actually a class you could take to prep you for it, to prep you for oh, it. That's great. And would also meet like the minimum requirements okay. to take that of, of the hours that you need in the in class type thing. Yeah. OK. I didn't realize I had that. Yeah. And, you you know, certified scrum master, your, your scrum mm-hmm. master, that one that's is pretty easy to get. Very easy. You can a lot of times get that in a week in class or doing like right. an online training and taking a class or, you know, IBA you know, which we do a lot with, you know, if you're going down the business analyst front or really even, you know, there's a lot of overlap between a PM and a BA as we, as we see. Um, so certifications are huge. You'll learn something in it. It's great foundation. And, you know, uh, especially as you further on in your career, you know, and you want to take on those bigger contracts or get into the organization, you see a lot of them listing down, you know, you need your certified scrum master. You need your PMP. Sure. Sure. Um, do you think enough students are taking advantage of that? Of the certifications and the yeah certifications and, um, the, um, what was the other thing we mentioned? The, the clubs and organizations. The clubs and organizations. Are enough, Cause my experience was that a, only a few people, yeah. uh, there are hundreds of students and less than dozens took advantage of that. Is that the same you experienced? It is. Now, I can't really say I was a big club and organization person because I worked a lot during right. college. Obviously, even before I was an intern at, at school specialty, I was working at Walgreens at the time. And I, you know, most nights throughout the week I was working. So I didn't really do much with the clubs and organizations. Now, there was some minimums that I had to do to get my uh, bachelor's. So, so do, do you think if you had to looking back, should you have maybe prioritized that slightly forward or you're, would you recommend to students to do that, to just look at it, try to fit as much in as possible? Yeah. yeah and, and you know, it's one of those things where you hear in school, like networking and clubs and organizations, and it may feel very uncomfortable at first. Mm-hmm. And, but that practice will pay major dividends. It pays off huge yep. and really, try your best to do that they have a lot of good things and maybe more so speaking from like uwo standpoint i know they do a lot to kind of help their students you know break the ice to get them more comfortable with that but that that's a big item especially when you're looking from like a a project management standpoint communication is huge and you know making yourself a well-rounded but it to maybe back to the original question no i don't think people do don't enough. take advantage of it no. enough so if you're a student or you know a student out there what are you waiting for go out there put yourself out there get involved in some of the clubs you don't have to participate every time for everyone but get involved network um work your network don't be afraid to work your network there's no no shame in talking to the people that you know asking questions and looking humbly for input and uh, their insights it could be completely valuable to you and make sure that you take advantage of the clubs and stuff that are out there i mean or the certifications that are out there yeah so what are you waiting for go do it right I mean, I'm telling you right now, if we were looking to hire an, uh, an intern PM and I had a resume come across my desk that had their certified scrum master, which is the easier of all of them to get, like that would definitely catch my That'd eye. Stand out. It, it would. I'd, yep. They show initiative. They're trying to get a leg ahead. I would for sure want to sit down with them, even if they were, you know, some random other job before that, yep. like that would definitely draw my interest to them. Exactly. And the other thing too that everybody should know, and I'm sure most people are living it, it the learning doesn't stop there. As soon as you're out, you gotta gotta keep growing, keep learning. Every new project that you do is a new opportunity to pick something up. So you learned what PIM was. Our audience yeah. probably doesn't know what PIM is. Yeah. Uh oh, what's the acronym? Product item master or product information management. management. Yeah, see, yeah. I can't even remember. <laughs> but I mean it same kind of means the same thing. Yeah. But you didn't even know what that type of system was before that project, probably. No, no, so. and and 
you can probably relate to this a lot. You know, when project management, you get thrown a lot of different projects and curveballs, curveballs. <laughs> and, and I mean, I just yeah. had one a few weeks ago, which we don't need to delve into on here. But, you know, every project's a learning opportunity to make yourself uh, a more well-rounded person. And there's a lot of a lot of that kind of taking itself step back, self-reflection. Hey, you know, what went wrong? What, what went right? Or, you know, how can I learn and grow? So that's a big thing about continuous learning. So uh, before we wrap up here, if you had a top three or four characteristics that a good project manager, whether agile or waterfall needs to have, what would those characteristics be? Uh, Communication, huge, respectful, um, reliable and you said four right three i said three or four i'm gonna stick with i'll stick so with three com- good communication good communication respectful reliable yep okay so i'm gonna so be able to communicate well uh be able to communicate with anybody and connect with them yep. right yeah Th- that's where the, re- the respectful comes in right because you're going to connect with other people then or just be a generally good person and then reliable <laughs> it's mean what you say and say what you mean yeah and show up and show up show up be okay. on time be there be present yep i great advice yeah great advice okay appreciate it appreciate your time here today thank you for joining us this was uh, pretty uh enlightening and I, w- I would dare say entertaining i learned some things about you i want to learn some more about the um the steak cooking yeah come cook one yeah do you do you use project plan or project management techno- techniques with that? Checklists? I have, I have that? my entire program written out. And then before we go to a competition, <laughs> I have a big checklist that I go through to make sure I forget, didn't forget anything. See, it spills over <laughs> into your life. That's great. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're able to join us today. Make sure to follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exciting content. Make sure to reach out to us through our website if there's an IT or other topic like cooking steaks that you'd like to hear us discuss thank you for joining us for this conversation as you chart your course to your next destination may your journey be filled with purpose and confidence until then stay true to your compass